start. In this lesson, we're going to learn a very interesting result in number theory. It is also very useful. It is known as the Chinese remainder theorem. In this lesson, we're going to only talk about a simple case of it. So the problem, an example of the problem goes like the following. There are certain soldiers whose number is unknown but less than 100. If we count them by threes, we have two left over. Okay, count by threes. So in a group of three, 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 we're going to have two left over. If we count them by fives, we have three left over. If we count by sevens, we have two left over. The question is, how many soldiers are there? So first, why this problem is known as the Chinese remainder theorem? Um, it is actually, the story goes, um, this problem, the number of soldiers problem, was faced by a famous Chinese general in the early Han Dynasty. And his name is Han Xin. A very, very brave and uh, uh, strategic general in Han Dynasty. His name is Han Xin in Chinese. Um, and the legend went, when he was faced with this problem, he figured out very quickly. So it's kind of like this General Han is not only really good at uh, maneuvering the soldiers on the battlefield, he was also very good at math. In this lesson, we're going to learn how we solve this problem. So clearly, this number n, which we want to find out, is going to have the following property. If we represent what we have in the language into math, the n is going to be congruent to 1, or actually 2, when divided by 3. So n is congruent to 2 modulo 3, which means that when I divide by n, divide n by 3, the remainder is 2. That's the same as we count them by 3s, we have 2 left over. And also n is going to be congruent to 3 when modulo 5. So divide by 5 is 3 left over. And n is going to congruent to 2 mod 7. And the first question is, does n exist? And the second related question is, what is this n? Now, does it exist? The answer is yes. It's not only for 357, it is true for that. It's going to be true for any numbers that such are co-prime to each other. And we're going to go detail of that. So always yes. What's the n? Now actually, there are many n exist. In here, we're using less than 100 to limit. There's only one solution. Because you see that once you find the n, but then n plus 3 times 5 times 7 is going to be another solution. Because 3 times 5 times 7, when you divide by 3 divided by 5 times divided by 7, it's all going to have modular 0. So uh, if n is a solution, this is always also another solution. And clearly you can add in more 3 times 5 times 7, which is 105. You can add in 105, 105, it's always a solution. So here we're interested, really, what is the smallest n. Okay. So we want to find out such n. And we're going to describe a general approach to that. But first, before we tackle this um, problem with three numbers, three, five, seven there, you have to satisfy three equations. We want to satisfy a, find a number, satisfy two equations. Let's 
first look at this simple case. How to find the number n such that n is congruent to 2 modulo 3 and n congruent to 3 modulo 5. Okay, what is the smallest n? When I say smallest n, it actually means that smallest positive integer n. So how we solve it? There are two approaches. One approach is we kind of learn when we are probably in the fourth, fifth grade. So how you do it? You first satisfy the first equation. Let's say as n equals is congruent to two modulo three, or n is congruent to three modulo five. You can using start with either equation. Let's say I using n is congruent to three modulo five. So then n is going to be in the form of three, uh, five times k plus three, right? So that satisfies the first, second equation, basically. And in this case, then I'm going to increase. So n um, equals five k plus three. So that n, if you look at the sequence, it will be either three. Uh, next one is 8, next one is 13, next one is 18, and one by one I'm going to check if the number satisfy the first congruence. So 3, is it congruent to 2, modulo 3? No. Is 8 congruent to 2, modulo 3? Yes. So here I find the solution. That's method number one, which is fairly useful. Here I'm going to introduce this method 2, which is much more general and scalable. I'm going to start with right n is uh, equal to 5a plus 3b. Why I won't do that? Now, if you look at five equal, n equals 5a plus 3b, this thing is going to come, be congruent to 5a when I divide by 3, modulo 3, because the 3b is a multiple of 3. And n also, is also going to be congruent to 3b when modulo 5 by the same token because the 5a is a multiple of 5 so modulo 5, 5a is 0. So really now the constraint or equation that I want to satisfy n is going to 2 modulo 3 going to be the same as 5a is going to be congruent to 2 modulo 3 and 3b is going to be congruent to 3 modulo 5. Okay, now I have basically two variables, separate variables, 5a is congruent to 2 modulo 3, and 3b is congruent to 3 modulo 5. Can we find such a and b? And the answer is pretty clear. In this case, a is going to be equal 1 and b is going to be congruent to really 1 modulo 5. Interesting, both of them are 1. So which means that n is going to be 5 plus 3 equals 8. Okay, and that is the second method. In the next part, second part, in the second part of this lecture, we're going to solve the final problem of this when we have three numbers, n has to satisfy congruent to some number uh, modular with the first number, another number modular with the second number, and another with the third number. The n has to satisfy three congruent equations.
and we're going to talk about what is the general method to solve that.